we're back. Yep. Thank thanks for thanks for coming. Thanks for welcome welcome back. Off to a great start. <laughs> um there we go. My gains were like all the way in the toilet. I had to fix that. Hang on. There, there's better. Okay, cool. Um we're we're struggling. I mean, I'm killing Amanda right now. I'm absolutely murdering her. She just cannot handle it. She's so over my bullshit. She cannot take it. No more. Yeah, um, she uh earlier she was like, You wanna do six o'clock? I was like, sure, it'll be six thirty for us. It's currently seven. Um yeah. Almost seven, five minutes to seven. So, but anyway, uh, welcome to the Neurodivergent Podcast. Uh, you can finish the intro because you're the one that always does it. So, go on. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> you're listening to the Neurodivergent Convergence Podcast. Um, that's my dog, if you can hear it in the background. Um, my name is Nikki, or if you're watching and you can see my little tag, it's Nikito Bonana today, queen of the squirrels. And this is Aminder. Say hi, Aminder. Hi, Aminder. And mine says or, Mina. Mina. Um, which was your name in Spanish class, and what no, my boys call you? It Auntie was Mina. it was it was it was Carmen in Spanish class. But oh, Mina's that's right. Where did Mina name. come from? It's just it's a just nickname that came up. Yeah, I guess and that's what my boys have always called you is Auntie Mina. And, and then Nikita is Spanish. I mean, it wasn't your Spanish name, but it was like they're like ah Nikita, and then Bonana yeah. from the Bonana King. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's me. Anyway, uh, we are two <laughs> neurodivergent best friends traveling the neuroverse together uh, because we are not. No, almost mm -hmm. got it because we are living in a neurotypical world and we are not neurotypical girls. We come at you every Thursday with our bullshit. Um, this week will be no exception. I have a long squirrel story to tell you. Um, we have small topic to discuss, which is more of a chatty topic anyway. More of just like an observation that's been made. Um, and then we will hit Jeremy, if you want to stick around for Jeremy. Uh, I believe we've made some advancements in the storyline. So, uh, we always start our show with a little bit of fun. And then uh, we do our topic, and then we have fuckery at the end in the form of an AI-assisted story. We used to have uh, uh, completely AI. We have since become assistants to the AI. Uh, and I know not everyone is a fan of AI, but uh, we do not claim to own 80 to 95% of the content. So I feel like at least we're being honest about that. That we're not writing at all. It's not our own intellectual property. So that happens at the end of the show. If you prefer to stick around to hear that stuff. It will be at the end of the show. Uh, you can do so then. And, and yeah. And there. Um, let's get going. I am also starving. So this will be another episode. Where if you're watching. You'll get to watch me eat. Sorry. Uh, if you like that sort of thing. You're welcome. Yeah, if you don't. I'm very I'm sorry. But uh, anyway, let's start with the fun. Aminder. Yes. What you want? So I first need an adjective. Okay. Um, I chose broken. Oh, poor thing. Uh, noun. Excalibur. Like the sword. This is all over the place. There's no theme. Uh, another noun. Failed relationship. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another noun. Fake flowers. She's doing double whammies. She's putting adjectives with nouns. Uh, another adjective. Gilded. Gilded Age. I like that show. Uh, noun? I skipped it on accident. So I'm gonna choose... I don't know. What am I gonna choose, Amanda? Uh, I'm gonna Look panic. Look at the room. Uh, no, no. Panic. Panic. Yep. panic is a noun? Yeah. 
It's like in a panic, I think. You can panic. Panic at the disco. Uh, Adjective? Rotten. Rotten. Uh, Verb? Undulate. Undulate. Un. Ju. Late. I feel like I'm missing a letter in there, but that's okay. Uh, pronoun? Millennials. Millennials. We're the bane of a lot of people's existence, apparently. Uh, noun? I will allow you to shorten this, but for my own sanity, I had to write the whole thing out. Starbucks pink drink, but you can shorten it to pink drink. I'll do Starbucks pink drink. It's shorter than failed relationship. <laughs> <laughs> uh plural noun blue balls blue balls adjective loose loosey goosey uh type of liquid coke zero That's you got me started right drinking that that's what i'm drinking right now uh occupation exterminator Oh, that's dark. Oh, oops. No, it's it's it would be funny, but it's dark. Okay. Uh, noun. Birthday candle. Of which I will light now as our little. Yeah, if y'all don't, y'all have not figured it out yet. I'm a slight bit, uh, what you might call witchy, and I like to set little intentions. So I light a little candle before we start our episode, and I done forgot to do it. Okay, moving on. Uh, And last one, an adverb. Begrudgingly. Grudgingly. That's what I choose. Okay. Allow me to take it. So we are still in the Pokemon Mad Lib. We don't have that many left. I think we have like five. Um, This one's called Squirtle So Cute. It says, what's blue? What's blue? Broken. Covered in a hard Excalibur and probably the cutest failed relationship you've ever seen. Oh Squirtle, of course. <laughs> That's a lot packed into one sentence. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, although it's uncommon in the fake flowers, uh, Squirtle are one of the many, or sorry, Squirtle are one of the Pokemon many Kanto region trainers start their adventures with, along with Bulbasaur and the Gilded Charmander. Squirtle Cute. like to gather in groups near the Panic or on rotten islands. Like many <laughs> other water-type Pokemon, Squirtle love to undulate, torrent, when they are in battle. But they also have other millennials up their sleeves. For example, a Squirtle shell is a useful Starbucks pink drink. It can pull into it for defense or for blue balls, and its ridges... <laughs> Blue balls are ridges. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Sorry, Squirtle. And you're you're always my favorite starter. I'm sorry. Um it can pull into it for defense or for blue balls, and its ridges allow Squirtle to be loose underwater. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Not that. Oh, God. Uh, A Squirtle can spray Coke Zero from its mouth with great accuracy. (laughs) If you don't watch out, you'll get a face full of it. So if you want to be a great Pokemon exterminator, be sure to have a Squirtle in your birthday candle. You'll be be grudgingly glad you did. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. (laughs) Oh, boy. Okay, so... One, two... Three. Three left. That's it. Oh, man. We have to start shopping for a new one. I have this, like, the mega 50 best Mad Libs of all time thing, but I just feel like the themed ones are fun. We need to find, like, an adult one or something. An adult yes. one or just something, yeah, so just something else fun. Okay, I agree. So, Amanda, what are we uh, talking about Today, this was your suggestion, so I'm going to let you kick it out. What are we talking about today? Well, it kind of just randomly came to me, the whole, since being diagnosed um, ADHD and working on a diagnosis with autism, like for autism, um, 
it's the whole being able to recognize signs of it in other people, kind of like Gadar, but for neurodivergency. Um, so before, and I think it's also kind of tied to empathy, because before I would be more annoyed by people who just, I thought, were just weird or being annoying for the sake of being annoying. Um, kind of like the whole, like, this This is not, like, either coworkers or friends or something, but one example I think I mentioned before is kind of like, like, when Nicholas, when you guys were at my house, he was probably, like, three or four, and he threw a fit because I would not let him slide down the stairs on his butt, and now I'm like, that that's probably like he threw an absolute fit like and the stairs were wet i wasn't like just saying no just to be a bitch to him but i was like the stairs were wet it just rained and i was like no you don't want to do that and so i picked him up to try to take him down the stairs and he threw a fit climbed out of my arms ran back up the stairs and then still wanted to go down the stairs on his butt which granted yes that's like a toddler thing too but i think obviously like the autism probably played into it so and then my main example for myself was my dad, because my dad is some sort of neurodivergent. He was actually diagnosed bipolar and refuses to take medication, but I know a lot of people that are diagnosed bipolar are actually either ADHD or autistic, especially women. I think a lot of women get diagnosed bipolar when it's usually one or the other. For um, sure. And same with like dep having depression, anxiety, um, because, you know, like we talked about before, it tends to be a male-centric diagnosis, both of them, yeah. for ADHD and autism. So women tend to be diagnosed with literally anything else. Um, mm -hmm. So that made me think of my dad. Like, my dad has always been very particular. He's not very social. He just, like, and he, he kind of, like, is a texture thing with me, too. Like, he, we have, this, like, similar... Like, he's more an adventurous eater than I am, but we have similar things and, like, we, we don't, we both don't like taking baths because we don't like how sitting in a bathtub. It just, like, I, my skin crawls just thinking about taking a bath. Like, I, I've been taking a shower since I was eight. Um, I know, and I'm so and, jealous of your bathtub. <laughs> I, would, I know. I would my give bathtub limbs for that bathtub. <laughs> I know, I have my, my, uh, I have a pretty big bathroom and I have a corner garden tub and I've never used it because I can't fathom, like, sitting in it and sitting in my own filth water. Um, <laughs> and then the, uh, like, I feel like if I took a bath, I would have to take a shower first, which kind of defeats the purpose. So the, um, so my dad and I don't like taking baths. The whole, he also does, he will eat peanuts, saying it like me, but he won't eat things with peanuts in them. Like brownies mm -hmm. won't eat. So that sort of thing. Like we'll eat them separately. That's really fine. Um, so we're similar in that way. Uh, my dad gets annoyed pretty easily, um, just with sounds and textures, stuff like that. So pretty sure. And, and like, like my dad was born in 1953. So it's the whole, obviously they didn't diagnose people with this sort of stuff back then. Um, yeah. but I get my dad, like I said, my dad's very particular. He was in the army for a few years. Um, it's just, which I know it seems like a random thing, but it's like, I feel like a lot of people that are in the army, it's because they like structure. Mm -hmm. And he joined on his own volition. Like, it was during the Vietnam War, but he wasn't drafted. He yeah. went because he wanted to. So I think it was like the whole structure thing. My dad likes structure. So that's how, that's kind of like how the topic came to be. Because I was thinking of my dad, like, my dad is definitely, has one or both of ADHD yeah. or autism. Um so it hasn't like sent him back any any like I don't think he would be any different if he knew I don't think he would care like I don't think he would disregard it like say well I don't have either of those but right. I don't think he just wouldn't care one way or the other it's just more of an yeah. observation than anything yeah I feel like I've had many similar experiences myself I feel like I've developed this like almost sixth sense where I can like point things out and in, in people and I I center on things in people where I'm like you're doing that because you're some form of neurodivergent. You're mm -hmm. some kind of neurospicy. Like, I can just tell. My dad especially as well. So, like, oh, my God, that was the grossest burp ever. I'm so sorry. I hope nobody heard that. It, like, I was trying to talk and it, like, came out while I was trying to talk. That's disgusting. I'm so sorry. 
this is what we do here. Um, anyway, I've talked with my dad about this before, actually. Like, I'm, I straight up told him, I got this from you. Like, I got this. This is your fault. <laughs> like, all mm -hmm. of this is your fault. And he was like, I know. I got, I'm not kidding. Like 90% of me is my father. I feel like, I feel like there's like a 10% Sherry in there. Which, which and is like, which is interesting. Cause the whole like nature versus nurture thing, like you correct. didn't grow up with your dad. So like you definitely, it's all your, in your case, it's definitely the nature thing. Right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. My, so my dad and I's relationship, like I'd like to get him on the show at some point. I'm sure he'd love to come and chat. Like I would love to have a little like chat about this, but like him and I have talked, this is just what it is. Our relationship was very different our story is very different and we did not start to form a genuine relationship together until we were, until I was grown and I already had kids and was married. Like in my almost 30, I believe was when we started really having a good relationship. I'm very late twenties into my very early thirties. So I, which I'm still in my early thirties. Sorry. That was the dumbest thing ever. I'm, I'm going to be 34 this year. I'm not that fucking old. It's fine. Anyway, my um, my dad and I talk about this stuff because I notice so much of the things I do, the more I spend time with him, he does the same shit. And I'm like, fucking hell, you're patient zero in this situation. Like, <laughs> you are why I am the way I am and why my children are the way they fucking are. Like, I am... I, I found patient zero. It's my dad. So like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like I've been able to point things out to him and he's like, we've had good conversations about it, which is nice. And I feel like, while I don't want to say I want to make a habit of going around like you're neurodivergent and you're neurodivergent. Just, I don't feel like I have a license to diagnose people now because I can sort of see traits easier in other people that might possibly be neurodivergent. I do feel like it's almost it's almost hard to ignore. Like I would never just walk up to somebody like you're not divergent, aren't you? Because you do did it did it did. But I feel like it's really well, fucking hard to, to ignore. do that. It's I, I, they have to be like a close friend or someone I worked right. with like for a long time. Because even even when um I first started like this before I was diagnosed with ADHD and I I think I've told this story, but my coworker and I we were sitting at a table at like an event. Um, and it was in like a, it was in a church, like it was in, in the gymnasium of a church. And there's like a lot of people and it was loud. And I remember telling my coworker, this was mm, about a year ago, I think. I want to say like, not last December, but December before. And I remember saying to my coworker, yeah, I'm thinking I might be autistic. She's like, yeah, I never really wanted to say anything. And she's a really blunt person. Like she will be yeah. the person with that, that she's a blunt person. She goes, I never wanted to say anything, but I've always kind of felt you were on the spectrum and I didn't feel offended because it's like yeah. well that's what I'm going for um yeah so and so but I'm then I then I had to go through all my mind I'm like okay what was I doing that <laughs> made her think because we never like worked like we we like we kind of worked in the same office for a little bit but then we worked at different places I'm like okay she's like I'm like oh and so I was like what do you okay well, like what like, same example she's like just the way you phrase things because we yeah. normally talk over chat she's like just the way you phrase things i'm like okay <laughs> and so, example like, please <laughs> like, yeah, like, and like i said it's like i wasn't offended but then it's also like okay now i'm thinking like are you maybe on the spectrum that you saw it so easily right. like when even when i was telling my mom about it i was saying like and my mom is one of those my mom is strange in the fact that she's a very hard skeptic, but then she also, it's a whole bias thing. If it fits her bias, she'll believe it, that yeah. sort of thing. Um, so when I told her what I was like, this is before I got diagnosed, and I told her that I'm thinking I'm this, and I laid out like pretty good reasons for it, she was like, oh, and we were, we were like, we were driving and she kind of just I was like oh okay but the whole mother thing of like that's nice honey <laughs> so like oh okay that like oh like maybe she didn't really believe me or like didn't really yeah. think that I was but and I've talked about this several times but it's kind of like might be partly because I grew up with a cousin who was diagnosed with ADHD right. and autism it just presents differently and so having him have it like 
well, my daughter doesn't act like that, so obviously she doesn't have it. So right. I think it was more of the she was kind of like placating me to like, oh, okay, but not really believing it. And so I think even when I told her that I got officially diagnosed, she didn't, like I said, didn't really disregard me. She just was like, oh, okay. But Mm -hmm. so like you said, it's the whole, like, I would not go up to someone and be like, I know you're autistic. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't do that. But it's, it's more of a, it's more of the, uh, (laughs) I know what you are. Yeah, I know, I know how you're saying. Say it. Say, say it, it, Bella. Say it, Bella. <laughs> what am I? Say it out loud. <laughs> uh, the um Oh god. So, but basically whenever I see people that I know aren't like for lack of a better word out as yeah. having ADHD or autism, it's like I can kind of see I'm like I can kind of tell that you yeah. might be. And it's the same thing with, like, watching TV, because I think, what was I, I was watching some show, I wish I could remember, I was watching some show, and they don't, like, have the, like, don't, they haven't written the character as, like, outwardly autistic or anything. Yeah. Um, But I'm just, like, I was watching it with someone, I think it might be watching with my mom, but I, we were watching it, and I just said, that character's definitely autistic, they wrote that, <laughs> it's like, what is it like when they call it like queer coded? Like they say queer yeah. coded for different. Um, coded. Yeah, so I think I feel like like that character definitely like it's like the whole uh, Sheldon on Big Bang Theory. Like he's I don't think they ever outwardly said he is, but he definitely yeah. is. Like he definitely they never oh, like sure. outwardly said what was wrong with him. Like they even made yeah. this joke. He goes, "No, my mom had me tested. I'm not crazy." It's like, well, <laughs> obviously, you're. Not obviously, but it just it just you present so autistic. So I, yeah. which isn't bad. I'm not saying like oh, every character that acts autistic needs to be outwardly said as autistic in every TV show and movie. And that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's easier to spot those sort of things. Um, I think now learning learning more and more about this and just kind of seeing it in myself and it's the whole, yeah. it's the whole, like why didn't I realize this sooner about myself? as well because it's like it's like oh all these things that i thought just made me awkward which and weird which i am but it's also just all these things that there's a reason and so it's it also made me like realize i was talking to my coworker that we were both like we were both having major burnout this week i'm just both of us are like i just i don't want to do anything i don't want to work and then but it's also, like, I wish I could call in, like I said earlier, I wish I could call in, like, for executive dysfunction. But it's like, no, you're just right. being lazy. I'm not, really. But so it's the whole, like, my whole life I thought I was just like, oh, you're just lazy. You're just not unmotivated. You're just all this. You're just forgetful. And so, but recognizing those sort of things in other people is just easier now, I think. Um, so, sure. so, yep. That's all. <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> That's that's my story, and I'm mm-hmm. sticking to it. End of um, speech. <clears throat> yeah, I feel I feel the same. Like everyone at my job, I'm pretty sure is neurodivergent. Like all of us have sort of discovered our own version of neurospicy. My boss, 100, was has what she she calls it ADD because that's what it was called when she was growing up. Like there was no. There was, they were still two different things, ADHD and ADD, but, and she'll tell you, like, I think she might have a touch of the tism and I've told her that because she will correct you if you say ADHD and I'm like, Amy, it's, it's all the same now. <laughs> like It's all the mm-hmm. same now. I don't, but I'm not hyper. Yes, I know. I know that, but like, it's all the same now. It's all ADHD. There's, there's no ADHD. It's, it's an umbrella. ADHD. It's, it's an umbrella. It's an umbrella term. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. it's your it's your it's how you present it's like i never was a hyperactive Correct. kid so mine is more of the attention deficit thing more than the hyperactive yep. thing so yeah which i still think adhd is just not properly termed anyway but that's a whole nother episode for a whole nother day um it's it's not a okay i'm gonna go into it anyway no shut up we'll talk about it later um <laughs> anyway my whole workplace i believe is some form of neurospicy um we've all sort of talked about it with each other which is nice because then we don't have to be like that bitch is got a touch of the tism and Mm -hmm. and we know that about her but we can't tell her that um 
also I've I've made it it's become more apparent to me in like people's children, like signs of it in other people's kids. And like that's where it gets like rocky territory because it's like you can't just tell somebody their kid might be on the spectrum or might have ADHD. Like y- you can't just say that shit to some people. Some people would be like, oh, my God, thank you. But other people would be like, what the fuck is your problem? Don't tell me about my kid. So like I would have welcomed someone mentioning that to me. Like, mm, have you thought about maybe checking this out for the kid? Um, but I, I'm not every person, obviously, but I do feel like I notice it more in other people's kids and I tend to sort of adjust my, I don't want to say like my judgment, but that's, I feel like the best word. Yeah. Like my viewpoint on why certain behaviors might be happening out in public with kids now like i used to just assume that every kid throwing a fit in the store needed an ass whooping right because that's Mm -hmm. how i was raised but the more i understood about my own child and then understanding about myself like it's you can't beat a meltdown out of a kid like that's not gonna happen right like no amount of spanking no amount of direction no amount of you know scolding or whatever is gonna fix the fact that the kid's having a meltdown he can't control right so it's like and it's like a fine line too because like yes there are kids that that throw fits and scream and are not autistic and so right it's just it being a brat but it's the whole being able to tell whether or not they're being a brat like i'm i'm child free so it's just the whole so i'm more like yes i'm more sympathetic than i was before like more empathetic than i was before about it but like we we I mean, I like use, use, wow, words, like using, like used to work in with the public and like at a bookstore mm-hmm. when I have a kid throwing a fit, I'm just like, just raise your kid better. Like Jesus Christ. Cause right. I remember like I have a story like my dad and I don't understand the whole, this is just, I know it's, uh, this is a tangent, but like, I don't understand the whole, okay. the whole, I'm just got my, my kids scream and cry in the middle of the store and not do a damn thing about it. So because my dad told me when my mom was um on a trip with a friend overseas i was like two or something like that and he had taken me out to some restaurant you know just me and him and i started throwing a fit because you know i was two years old and so i started throwing a fit he took me out of the restaurant and had me cried out didn't beat me didn't do anything like my dad never hit me didn't do anything he just had like and I guess I obviously don't remember this is him me telling like him telling it to me but just let me cry it out um outside or some parents they just let the let the kid do it in the store and so I'm just like I understand like kids can't help it like sometimes with having meltdowns and everything but it's also like you can also mitigate it there's to me it's like a fine line of yeah like okay like the whole ipad kid generation like that i've seen talked about more and more like the whole i like basically give a kid an ipad to shut it up like they can't Mm -hmm. go to a restaurant without having an ipad in their hands and or whatever and it's like and then you take it away from them and they scream and cry and throw them out there like you have to also get like teach them coping mechanisms because like i was also never a person that would have meltdowns so i know i'm not being very empathetic in that point so it's like well you don't understand i understand like i i know that so i don't know like i said it's the whole like i'm not a i'm not a parent so i don't understand i get that i'm hyper aware of that situation of that of that um situation so i know i'm talking out of my ass in that sort of aspect but but now knowing more about what i do like like more about myself now when i see a kid like you said having a meltdown i don't instantly think fucking brat I don't instantly right. think that. I'm just like, oh, they're probably going through it. Oh, they're overstimulated. Or oh, they're overwhelmed or whatever. But so that's... And even non, like, neurodivergent children, neurotypical kids can get overwhelmed and have... They're just overwhelmed. Like... Yeah. Because they're kids. It, they, they don't Because they're kids. Emotion, they're on emotional... Emotional regular... They don't let emotionally regular... Regu- oh, my God. Emotionally <laughs> regulate. Jesus Christ. Correct. 
-hmm. that's what you're there for as the adult. And I feel like I could do an entire, like we should do an entire parenting episode at some point. I know, like you said, you're child free, but like, I, I have a different perspective on things because I am not child free. I have two childs. And so <laughs> I <laughs> child times Childs, two. I have childs. I have two of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny but anyway um we could get into that topic deeply so i, I don't want to stray too far off because i feel like we've we've jumped on several different trains at this point mm -hmm. um but anyway yes i feel like there are me learning about myself i feel like the the bottom line point here that we can pull it all together and wrap it up in a bow the bottom line point here is i feel like we might have like you said like almost like a like a gaydar but for neurodivergent like people sense. like yeah a sixth sense for it but like and i'm sorry if that's like offensive that i said that but like that's the only thing i can think to compare it to um i feel like it's caused me to have more awareness of maybe why things are happening or why people are behaving a certain way around me as opposed to had I not learned these things about my children and about myself, maybe I would still have the beliefs I had before. I wouldn't, but definitely would parent differently. Um, I would have much different uh, interactions in the world, I think, if I did not have the understanding I have now. Is basically what I'm trying to say. I feel like it creates more of an empathetic viewpoint on humanity in general right um it's kind of like this thing i heard the other day where it's like if you and i've been seeing it a lot it's like if you design and accommodate for the most accommodations possible you end up helping everyone around you right and you can mm -hmm. apply that to literally everything like you know, accessible doorways and things like that. You know what I mean? Like accessible sidewalks and everything like that. Any kind of accommodation you can think of. If you can accommodate to the highest degree possible, right? It helps everyone. You're not hurting anyone by accommodating someone and their needs, right? Someone with high accommodations doesn't hurt someone with no accommodations, right? Right. It's like the not whole people like... Whenever something, so like, say a restaurant presents a new option. I, I think I remember, what was it? I want to say, like, Cracker Barrel came out with something that was vegan. Not necessarily vegan, but almost like a, not tofu burger. But basically, it was basically just another option of some sort of meat product. Yeah, it was beyond, uh, they started offering Beyond Meat on their menu. And yeah, so the, amount the Christians of absolute, lost their goddamn mind. Absolute boomers. <laughs> That God forbid they have a restaurant have more options. They acted like right. their meat products were being completely taken away. Like how got um, it's like they're they're not. They're just offering. It's it's like getting mad it's when an option. A, like a steakhouse offers salad. Like well, or how, chicken. It's like you're you're like a steak. Yeah, it's like you you're you have chicken on your menu. Well, that means I can't have steak. Like right, you dumb. Like fuck. no one took your steak away, dumbass. Relax. And so, and so, like, one of the, another example is I saw this picture of, it was like a custom kitchen, and it was made for yes, someone in a wheelchair. Yes, I saw it too. Yes, I saw it too. Yeah, it was made for someone in a wheelchair. The amount of absolute selfish ass people, they're like, well, good luck with that. I'm like, there's nothing wrong with the kitchen that you could, like, a normal, like, sorry, normal, but you know what I mean. Like, a per like an able-bodied person would not be able to use. It's like. Right. It's or like the whole sh or showers that are like the type that you walk in and you can sit down. Nothing's right. preventing you from using it like a regular shower. Correct. So, or nothing's preventing you from using that kitchen normally. But like, you know yes. who would be real happy if they had that accommodation? Mm -hmm. Someone who was an able bodied person and then suddenly became a disabled bodied person. Yeah, because like you never know. Because like even some of the comments are like, you guys are acting like you will never age or never has something happened to you like you right. if you if you get this kitchen and i say like say you purchase this house like after the person that owned it that had designed it and you're an able-bodied person you purchase the house but you don't necessarily need all the accommodations that are in it like nothing's ha nothing <clears throat> says that that won't happen to you correct so or happen to a loved one like what if your like parents have to 
right do i have to take care of your parents or your grandparents or like someone like your spouse someone in your family has to all of a sudden or your child yeah so it's like it's not the end of the world like people act like this is another oh man we're getting out so many tangents today but people act like people act like inclusivity like is denying them what they what they want it's like the whole like the whole um marriage equality thing too i know another right. tangent marriage equality thing too where it's like well they can't get married because then my marriage doesn't mean as much okay you no. you veer your you veer your, your marriage so little that's what you think right like that you other have to people base get, its val its yeah. validity on uh, someone else's right to do the right. same other, thing uh, like, other people get the same rights or same accommodations same like everything anything that you've always enjoyed or always had the privilege of having does not mean that your life got worse correct. i don't understand that so like like we said it's the whole like you like you can't and unfortunately you can't build every single building you can't have every single program of any kind just be 100 percent accommodated for 100 percent of the people like that's not right. realistic well, like small right. business yes a small business can make it to where yes they have a ramp going up to their store make sure the the things are wide like the aisles are wide enough like that's yeah. reasonable but you can't expect them to have like a chairlift or whatever or just other accommodations right but um, it's just to the to the degree in which it's possible right like yeah that's why I said, like, if you could accommodate to the degree in which it's possible for you to do so, you're not, you're helping everyone. So I just feel like, you know, we said all that to basically say, like, having a deeper understanding, and I've said this before, but when you have a deeper understanding of yourself, right, it breeds compassion for the rest of the world, which is why understanding of self, I think, is paramount to humanity like every human should at some point be able to have a deep understanding of self whether or not they can is not what i'm saying like it would be beneficial and ideal if every human could come to some kind of profound self understanding because it would grant un measurable grace and just understanding to literally the entire planet and also it's, it. it's also like the like becoming more empathetic um like understanding yourself it's kind of like like another example for myself is i used to be you know 300 pounds and so whenever i see someone heavier i'm not instantly going to be like ew gross fat person i'm gonna be more empathetic towards that person than say someone who i'm not saying all jocks are like this but say like a jock who's always been fit always whatever like they tend to degrade those people like act like they're right. subhuman they see someone who is over you know quote unquote overweight as lazy or making excuses for themselves or some you know in the worst bit less than you know like mm -hmm. That's a whole other topic again for another day as well. But like, I, I guess all this to say we were thinking, you were thinking about how you can spot it in people, right? And it's also, and, and uh, just, I had a thought and then I, I lost it yeah. as I started talking that I got back. It's also like the whole kind of stereotype of well, autistic people don't feel empathy. They don't, they can't connect with people. No, I oh, think for sure. once, once learning about this, like, I feel like it has basically just heightened my awareness of the people around me, like not instantly thinking someone's a jerk because they were blunt. So like, like I said, my coworker who had told me that she thought maybe I might be on the spectrum even before I came on set. She's like, I just never knew how to approach you about it. So it's made me think it's like, okay, maybe she is. And I'm not saying like a tit for tat sort of thing, but it's like, she does stuff that I'm, I'm like, she's a very blunt person. So I feel like other people, she rubs certain people the wrong way at work, but it's never bothered me because I know where she's coming from. Like, and there's been other coworkers that I've had, same thing. Like coworkers that I know other people did not like that they're like, oh, I never liked her. And she's, she's just so rude. I'm like, well, I personally have had a problem with her. Like, yes, she's very... She's, like, light rude, like, diet rude, 
uh, to members. We're not stealing that. <laughs> <laughs> She's dying rude. <laughs> yeah, she's rude light. I'm stealing that shit. That's amazing. Because that's yeah. me. I'm yeah. light rude. I'm diet yeah. rude. Oh my god, mm -hmm. I love it. She's, she's, she's rude light. And rude so, zero. Like, she's yeah. rude zero. Yep. Yeah. Here. Not sponsored, but rude zero. Um, so, oh my god, I love it. But she she would be rude light to members, but but other people rubbed her the wrong way. Like, got rubbed by, the wrong way by her yeah. personally. Like, like from with her interactions with them but and i and i would tell people outright it's like i can see why people don't like her yeah but i personally don't have a problem with her because and it's not because she never was rude to me but it's because she's blunt and i understand that and Correct. so it's the whole like empathetic thing like yes she could be nicer but i understand being blunt and not mincing words and just having dry humor so it's the whole knowing that about yourself so if you're someone that isn't sarcastic or has dry humor or is blunt yes that might come off as rude and so that's the whole like you said the whole being more self-aware helps you learn more about other people seeing that not everything's black and white not everything's cut and dry that you can um there's a lot more nuance to it that not everything is just like, oh, that person said a rude thing. Well, they're just a terrible person. No, they could just be like, and I've, I'm, and I've like not have outbursts, but I've like snapped at people before. And I apologize later because my immense sense of guilt, but it's the whole, if people more understood of like, well, I snapped at you, which yes, I know that's wrong. I'm not excusing it, but it's more of the reason is it's like, I'm overwhelmed. I'm tired. I, I, my I just wanted to sleep or something. So it's the whole just being more empathetic just in general just makes the world a better place. Just even even just people's behaviors. Just people's behaviors, people how people act, how you interact with people, just in general. Yeah. For sure. Um I feel like I don't know. I feel like my brain cells aren't online. Um, Cause I feel like there's definitely more we could say about this, but we've jumped on so many trains mm -hmm. that we got derailed it, several times. We got derailed several times. And, and so track, like, track is, is in, con in, in competition with us for how many times we got derailed. So. Oh, for sure. So I feel like we should probably wrap it up here. If you can relate to being able to spot that spot this and other people if learning this about yourself helped you to see things in other people in a way that maybe provided them more grace than you might have otherwise, if you can relate at all, if you can't relate, what the fuck ever, you can talk to us about it in several many places. Uh, everywhere socials are platformed, we are at the NDC podcast everywhere socials are platformed all those links will be in the show notes for you as well um we also have a discord where it's still just me aminder ray and micah and that's okay because we're happy to have them um but if you would like to come hang out with us because we're all pretty cool um you can do that at our discord which is also linked in the show notes. And I believe you find us just at the NDC podcast there too. All of our handles are basically the same for everything. Um, if you're listening to this and you'd like to watch the shit show instead, you are welcome to do so over on our YouTube channel, which is also at just the NDC podcast, youtube.com slash NDC podcast. Also in the show notes. If you would like to be on the show, if you would like to inquire in a long form, about something if you'd like to tell us we're shitty humans in long form or that you really like us and think we're cool you may do so by sending us an email to the ndc podcast at gmail.com we make it real easy for you people to find us like mm -hmm. real easy everything's we're, the same we're very we're very uh straight laced with that very um correct and you know what i even did us a solid minder you know what else mm -hmm. i did what even though we don't oh and we have a tweeter but we don't tweet um it's it's there but we don't really use it but I also did us a solid, and I secured us a Twitch channel Oh, with that name. Don't mm -hmm. know if we'll ever use it, 
but I got the name. And mm-hmm. then I also secured us a Patreon at that name as well. So when we start our Patreon, whenever we figure out what the fuck's going to live there and we start our Patreon, <laughs> um, we will be there too. So just be on the lookout for that. Aminder, should we tease? Should we tease the people about what we've been working on? Yes, in the upcoming, shadows? Yes, upcoming events. Yes, upcoming events. Uh, episode 50 is rapidly approaching us. At the time you're listening to this, you will have exactly seven weeks, okay, before episode 50. Why do you care about episode 50? Because episode 50 is going to be our live. You heard it here, live neurodivergent meme review. We'll be streaming to all the platforms I can stream on. We have to get YouTube to let us be that way because YouTube's weird, dude. Like, I'm having weird issues with YouTube. But anyway... We're going to be streaming live, episode 50. Um, We're doing a neurodivergent meme review. So what I need you to to do, please. I see all of you listening. I've seen our analytics go through the fucking roof. You guys are listening to the show. If you like this show and you want your meme featured in episode 50, please go to our Facebook page. We even credit you. We even credit. We will credit you. If you don't want to be credited, that's fine. We don't have to credit you. But we will credit you. Go to our Facebook page, please. There is a pinned post on the Facebook page. Drop your favorite neurodivergent memes in that on that post in the comments, please. Comment with your favorite meme um, and, and leave that there. We need to fill up the meme shelf, okay? So that we can have a very successful neurodivergent meme review. We've had a comment from Beyond Six Seconds podcast. Thank you, Beyond Six Seconds. We love you for that um love when we can work together and help each other out so that's great thank you for your contribution to the meme shelf um please join in contributing it's free it's free to contribute and it gives us content and we will do just about anything for content at this point (laughs) clearly i won't do an only goddamn brains don't work you don't you don't have you don't have to secure an only fans that's fine you don't No, no 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 i don't want i don't (laughs) want one of those and no one wants to see that anyway, so. No, no, don't nobody want that. Anyway, am I leaving anything out? Discord, email, socials, meme shelf. Oh, one last teaser. You ready? Yes. I'm going I'm to drop it, and then we're going to go to Jeremy. Be on the lookout for an upgrade to your, uh, your your little favorite show here. I'm getting real big headed when I call us their favorite show. We're getting a little bit of a facelift, folks. And I don't mean my own face, although I would really love one of those because we could use some help. The show is going to get a visual facelift. So stay tuned. We are still working on that. And I don't know when that shall appear to you. It's when but, we get the spoons. When we get the spoons. Yeah, for when it. we get the spoons. The show is getting a visual uplift, facelift update. That was lots of words. We got to stop this. We got to stop this thing. All right. If you're leaving us, we love you. And uh, we will see you next week. If you're not leaving us, it's time for Jeremy and a story for mm-hmm. me as to why my fingers taped up and why I was late. We're going to have a story time and then we're going to have a Jeremy time. So if you want to hear the story about why my finger is currently taped up, and why I was fucking late, and why my name says Queen of the Squirrels, and then you want to hear Jeremy, join us after Jeremy's intro, okay? All right. Off we go. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Here go Jeremy. So We're something back. I some yeah something I just noticed well because it's probably the first time I've like I've seen it but because normally Nikki just inserts it after the fact and I don't see it during like when we record the word starring is spelled wrong. Oh shit! Is it really? It's spelled staring. 
Ah, shit. I can't <laughs> spell. That's fine. I'll fix it. We're about to have a husband interruption. He has broken his shoes and needs to retrieve his others. Sorry for the husband interruption. Say hello, it's husband. So At least you could do if you're going to interrupt our stream and say hello. Or not stream, our episode. They can't see your face. Hi. Hi. You want to be headless? That's fine. He's like, yes, I do want to be headless. Leave your, me out of this. Uh, your potatoes are done. Over. Oh, thank you. Okay, bye, I love you. Bye, love you. Okay. Sorry. The poor man has broken his running shoes. And he has to go work out. So he needed his other shoes. And now I have to buy him new shoes. Which is fine, because I just bought like three pair of new shoes. Anyway, squirrel. We're back. Mm-hmm. Um, we're here. I need to fix my spelling mistake, appar apparently. Quick story time, and then we shall throw in Jeremy. So, first we're going to talk about my finger. Quickly. Um, I am not professionally licensed to do hair. However, I do work at a place that involves hair things. And I have to work on mannequin heads and make them pretty and cute. So I can't legally charge folks to do anything to them. Can't work on humans, but I can work on mannequin heads, right? So I was trying my hand at a, at a hair cut technique that I wanted to see if I could follow the tutorial on. Cause I'm just curious to know if I could. And, um, I fucked around and found out that, uh, there is a such thing as shears that are too long for you. And I chose wrong on my shear length and sheared my goddamn finger. So I cut a nice little triangle out the side here of, I don't know if I can properly show, properly show my finger here, but it's this side of my finger. Okay. And I cut a triangle chunk out of it. So if like, these are my shears, right? My fingers like this, cause I'm holding hair, right? So my shears come down at an angle and snip my finger. So I've cut a triangle into my finger, okay? These are fucking sharp. Let me tell you, these are sharp bitches. Like, barely ever been used, so they are sharp as fuck. It didn't really hurt at first, but I knew what I did. And so I hurried up, I wrapped it up, everything went later to urgent care, and got Dermabond put on it, okay? They said didn't need stitches, but it was deep and should have definitely needed Dermabond. Good go. That was Sunday? Sunday. And then yesterday, um, well, by Monday evening, the Dermabond was starting to come off. Um, and I noticed that pretty quickly and got nervous. But I had to work the next day, which requires me to use my hands quite a bit. So... I noticed that my finger, every time I bent it, I could feel the Dermabond splitting. And I'm like, fuck. So come Tuesday night, I, probably I had no Dermabond. Yeah, I probably, put it, I probably would have put it in a splint. Yeah. Um. So come Tuesday night, I had no Dermabond left on my finger. And Dermabond is just like a liquid stitch, basically. It's like a liquid bandage, like a second skin they put on instead of doing stitches. If you don't know what that means. So, um, it was gone. It peeled right the fuck off. So I've just bandaged it yesterday. And, um, that was a mistake because I got home, needed to take a shower. And I'm like, you know what? I'll take the bandaid off. I don't want to soak it, get it gross. I don't like a wet bandaid on my hands, right? It just feels fucking gross to me. So I took the bandaid off to shower. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Shouldn't have done that. I went to go wash my hair and I um, remember I cut it like this angle, right? So this angle. So when I put my finger in my hair, it, the hair got under mm. the triangle nope. Nope. and ripped it backwards. So um, I immediately started gushing blood in the shower, screamed for my husband um, and I had just put soap in my fucking hair. Like, I literally just went like this with the soap. Hadn't even worked it all over the place. And I ripped, then went like this with this hand, ripped the fucking finger back, scream 
for my husband because it's immediately gushing blood. There's blood in my hair. There's blood on my fucking hand. And I'm like, help. <laughs> like, I don't know what to do here. And so he comes in with paper towels. We put pressure on it. Well, I look at the time and all of the urgent cares around here close at fucking eight o'clock. And I am not going to the hospital to sit there for five fucking hours and come back with Rona and God knows what the fuck else. Oh, for a fucking finger that's bleeding, right? So I got it to stop bleeding, bandaged it up, whatever. So that's what's happening. That's why I'm taped. I had to, um, and I'm past the point to have it stitched at this point. Dermabond at this point is also not a good idea because I could be sealing infection in. So I'm just going to wrap it and keep it bandaged with antibiotic ointment. And this is just medical tape to where I can't really, I can't really bend my finger now. So like I've taped it on purpose so that I can't bend it past this point. So it's not so stiff that it's splinted, but it's stiff enough to where I can't bend it and keep breaking that open. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the finger story. The second story why I was late uh, cause I squirreled and blacked out in Target on accident. I thought I you got held up at work. No, I haven't been to Target in a while. I got off work a little bit late, but not really that late. And had to go to Target for some just things I needed anyway. And then I um, made it to the aisle with all the Funko Pop figures. And that was a mistake. I just realized that my Funko Pop is on the on tip yeah. over for Storm. Sorry, Storm. So I wasn't even really like, I just like to go check it out. Like I wasn't even in the, the market to purchase anything. I just like to see what they have because sometimes Target gets like exclusives. And um, I was just curious. I also needed to get something for my husband for Valentine's Day. And he's right now collecting the NECA figures of the Ninja Turtles, but they're monsters. So like ones like the wolf man and and then um like mummy and stuff like that mummy and shit like that yeah so he's collecting those so i was looking to see if they had any different ones well they did i found wolf man so then i start looking at the pop figures and i'm like just sort of glancing a lot of it's like tv shows like 1883 they had some they had like a mariah carey one they had some other things that i've seen already and then something catches my eye that I've never seen before. And I'm like, the fuck are you? So I look a little closer. It's goddamn Sheriff from Robin Hood. Mm -hmm. The Sheriff from fucking Robin Hood. Which which version of Robin Hood? The Men in Tights the one? The Disney movie. Oh, the, the, the Fox. Movie. Yeah. Now, if, so, if anyone... Okay, so don't, don't call me a furry. Don't shame me. But I thought Robin Hood was, like, hot. <laughs> as a kid yeah like i'm not a furry i don't i don't do don't that but furry, it's like don't shame but me. like i don't shame me but like i think i'm not alone because i saw a post like oh for the other sure day of like everyone is like is it just me or was robin hood it's the inexplicably voice. hot like yes it's it was the more voice, of an attitude it's the thing. attitude voice, yes it's the, the voice attitude. and the attitude like, it's not because mm -hmm. he's a fox but it's like it's the character was, in general, like yeah, and so I'm like, yeah, don't don't come yeah. for me. I'm not, I'm not like that. <laughs> don't so thank you. come for me. Yeah, but yeah. So I see the sheriff, and then I'm like, oh shit, here we go, because that's one of my favorite Disney movies. It's also Jordan's all time and really only favorite Disney movie, as far as like the animated ones go. So I was like, okay, now I have to look. Are there more? Right. So I'm looking around, I'm looking around, and you'd think the first thing you do is flip it over so you can see, oh, there's more in this collection, right? I didn't do that. Um, I didn't even notice that until the end because I just got zeroed in on it. So I proceeded to go through every single pop figure on the shelf, moved them all around, restacked them, checking under and behind every single goddamn thing until I unearthed every fucking one from the collection, one by motherfucking one, ending with Maid Marian. She took me the longest to find because somebody hit her. The where she was, somebody hit her ass. And I was like, I ain't fucking leaving without every one of these some bitches. Okay. I will turn over the earth at this point to find every last one of these goddamn things. And I will leave confidently knowing that I either purchased them all or they physically weren't there to purchase. Right. So I walked out with all six of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I'm glad you found them. 
It was the dumbest, most unhinged ADHD splurge I just moment imagine, I have ever had. I just imagine a full-grown woman with children, <laughs> like, but the children aren't there, just going through the shelf, like, just frantically piling through. The, like, oh, I just no, it wasn't you, frantic. I know. It was like, not I'm, frantic. I'm, I'm just, I'm just imagining, I'm imagining, like, I yeah. know that's not what you did, but I'm just imagining yeah. someone, like, just throwing everything behind them while, like, it just, the pile just grows. The pile of pop figures just grows. and so, Until they and, like, land on it. On, like, your, on your knees, like, your head, like, on the bottom, like, through the bottom shelf, your ass in the air. Just... <laughs> oh, so, yeah, I mean, it was, I was very slow and methodical because I was not going to miss determined. anything. I was, like, I was determined. You're combing through it. Fine tooth I comb. was combing. Yes, I sure was. I even pissed off a grown man in the adult, in the aisle, in the adult, in the aisle with me because he kept like trying to look around me and I was trying to move so that he could see, but then he just got frustrated and walked away. <laughs> so, like, like, obviously this girl's unhinged. I'll just leave. Yeah, now. she's unhinged and she's on a mission. So let's just come back another time. Never get between a woman and her mission, okay? Oh my God. I left with all six of them. I have never so impulsively... And so channeled in and dialed in, searched and found and accomplished a mission like that. Like, I I walked outside, sat down in my car, and I was like, fuck, it's like... It's like you blacked out. Like, you just, it's like you walked in, blacked out, yeah. walked out, and you're like, um, what? I walked in... And you just in, look at your hand and like, how do I have the six pop figures? Yeah, I walked in for... Four items and left spending three hundred and thirty. That's target for you. It's like Hotel California. Once you get in, you can't leave. Yeah, I spent three hundred and thirty-one dollars. I don't know on what. Like on what? I don't know. I I know that I left with those pop figures. At least, at least sixty of them. Trash were pop cans. Figures. Yeah, and a trash can, and um, a couple other things. Food, some food. So part so of so what food. were. What were, what were the six? The sheriff, May Marion, and Robin Hood. What were the other three? Yeah, so I got I got the sheriff, I got Friar Tuck, um, Maid Marion, Robin, and Little John, and uh King Richard. <coughs> Not King Richard, uh Prince John. Prince John. Yes. The only one they didn't make the snake. I'm so irritated. I oh, looked on the back, they didn't make the fucking snake. I'm like, what the hell? Oh, He's Sir the Hiss. best no. one. Cause cause from Jungle Book. Sir Hiss is from Robin Hood. I know. That's so annoying. I wanted Sir Hiss. But anyway, the rooster, the, roo the rooster that sings. Yes, um, in the rooster for sure, for sure. We need to like petition Funko to make those. <laughs> or maybe they'll come out in a separate collection. I don't know, that'd be nice. But anyway, so yes, I got all six characters. Um they are currently on my shelf in my uh dining room. I need to set all of these up. I have so many and then um Jordan, I I um got some early Valentine's presents. So he um i'm i'm obsessed with maleficent and aurora you know this so like sleeping beauty movie movie so he bought me aurora and the castle like her castle in a funko then he bought me maleficent on her throne and a hot topic exclusive that he was able to find of a, a maleficent in the fire mm -hmm. and she's in the fire glows like when she uh when she comes like leaves the birthday party or whatever. Yes. Yes. And I have a couple of other Maleficents too that I got for Christmas and one that I purchased a few. So I'm like, I'm collecting like all the ones that I can find of her. Cause she's my favorite. So like I'm collecting all of them, but yeah, anyway, I, um, I went a little crazy on Funko and blacked out in target. So that's why I was late and I had to get home. The finger was important because it also plays into this. So I had to get home. I had to take a shower because I had to get the Band-Aid off my finger. I had to then, like, take my shower. Then I had to get myself together. Then I had to redress my finger because I, I can't leave it open. So that took an extra, like, 10 minutes to do. So that's why I was late. But anyway, story time over for my life. Let's talk about Jeremy. No, talk Jeremy. about Jeremy? Jeremy, Jeremy turn, story time. Turn, story time. Yeah, Jeremy story time. So previously on this so sympathy um, previously on the going a little, yeah sympathy going a little insane um was chasing uh binky uh and finnegan and jeremy and then they had to run into a cave be oh and velvet um 
I don't think I mentioned Velvet in my story because I forgot to include it in like the prompts. So Velvet is just fine. just imagine Velvet being there. She's just not mentioned. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So a tree, like a lightning struck a tree and like put a put the like, tree fell between them and they were able to run into a cave. So that's where we ended up. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the prompt. Oh, am I? I don't know if you're on there. Can you see what animals I am? I didn't click on them because no, I was too okay. distracted by my story. It's okay. Hold on. We won't have that today. No, it's fine. I click. I click in two seconds and be in. But um, we c- we'll just do your animals when you're done. Go ahead and, and read, and then we'll okay. just do your animals when you're done. Okay. So the prompt was, fleeing into the cave from Sympathy the Unicorn, the group began to formulate a plan to help their friend. There was no way she would actually turn on them, right? Jeremy the Psychic Cat suggested that there had to be dark magic involved. Binky the Hardy and Finnegan the Fainting Goat were in agreement. Pulling together the magical knowledge, they came up with a spell to break Sympathy out of her trance. Leaving the safety of the cave, the heroes cautiously approached her to cast their spell to save their friend. This is where it starts. The air seemed to grow colder, and as the heroes watched, Sympathy the Unicorn began to turn into Sympathy the Witch. When she was fully transformed, Jeremy the Psychic Cat began to laugh maniacally. You know, if she kills us, she gets to be my slave. There was no more hiding the truth. Sympathy the Unicorn was a witch. <laughs> Dashing forward, the heroes defended themselves from Sympathy the Witch's many spells and tried to lure her away. But they were quickly overwhelmed. Overwhelmed by the sheer power of the witch, whose power seemed to grow more and more with every attack. Binky the Hardy and Vinnigan the Fainting Goat succumbed and were blown back into the cave. With the last of his remaining magical energy, Jeremy shielded himself from the witch's onslaught. By some act of God, this worked. As Sympathy the Witch's power finally overcame them, Finnegan and Binky managed to come back from being dazed and the heroes were able to cast their own spell. The enormous magical wall of cold seared through Sympathy's defenses and she stumbled back. Shaking her head, she looked towards her companions. They could see her eyes flickering, seemingly losing their wild, glassy appearance. What? I can't... You... She's inside me. I don't know if I can defeat her. Her mind was slowly being overtaken. Just hold on, Sympathy. Binky comforted her. We're going to help you. His soothing voice seemed to calm her further. It was at that moment that Sympathy the Unicorn's mind snapped free. It became clear to the heroes that the mystical madness they had helped bring to bear was finally breaking free. Uh, Jeremy's spell had worked. For the first time in days, they could actually see Sympathy Norcorn's eyes as she stared at them in confusion. She began to laugh, with tears in her eyes. With relief, the group joined in her laughter, amazed at what just had transpired. The laughter was very brief, however, as the laughter turned to screams. The spirit that had taken over Sympathy suddenly materialized before the group, who instantly recognized her as the dark sorceress Morgana. Enraged at, being, uh, enraged at being forced out of her host, she began casting a number of harsh spells upon the heroes. Before they could react, a brilliant light grew from beneath them, and Sympathy looked to her companions and started to speak, but there was no more time. The ground began to crack, giving way to an earthquake. Bolstered with newfound resolve, the group managed to come together in the chaos. They knew they had to finish this, but Morgana did not back down easily. The party felt itself being forced further into the cave, then suddenly, the earth collapsed beneath them, sending them plunging down a pit of swirling lava and death. Before they could fall into their demise... I'm sorry. Never- <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to stop you. What? I'm sorry. They're so serious. I'm trying... I'm trying to eat while you're, yeah. like, doing this so that... Because you're talking, so it's perfect time. But I literally... I was muted. And you... Uh, the swirling pit of lava and death i was like i would <laughs> and i had food in my mouth and i almost choked oh my god what why this was like why why death i don't understand well i mean i think a pit of lava would be death i mean true but like that's just i don't know this is just taking a weird turn anyway continue i'm sorry i was just shocked that's all okay go for it um Then suddenly, the earth collapsed beneath them, sending them plunging down a pit of swirling lava and death. Before they could fall into their demise, the overabundance of magical energy had thinned the veil between worlds. All of a sudden, stepping out of a portal was Finnegan's adopted grandfather, Penumbra. His strange golden armor glinted in the light from the lava flowing in the pit. 
He was an elemental of air, but his powerful arcane magic could also use the earth and water to good effect. He's basically three quarters of an avatar. Thinking fast, he managed to halt the hero's descent just inches above the lava. Morgana, not expecting the newcomer, paused briefly, but then began her assault anew with determined fervor. Throwing everything she had at Penumbra, his shield absorbed the worst of the elemental magic, but he was still losing the battle. Penumbra, help us! Finnegan screamed. While his grandfather had stopped their fall, they were still floating right above the pit of lava. Giving them his full attention, the veteran of the battle grabbed his shield and slammed it into the lava. A blazing arc of fire propelled them upwards, breaking the surface and allowing them to escape the hellish pit of death they were just seconds from joining. Finnegan and Penumbra shared an uneasy moment as they were about to resume the battle, but this time with the real chance of victory. Penumbra was the most powerful elemental mage of the world, second only to the old mage Merlin. It was something that Finnegan never quite had, but he knew that he needed to do everything he could to win. As the heroes were rescued, Penumbra breathed a sigh of relief and rushed over to the group, embracing them. With everyone reunited, they all turned back towards Morgana, ready to end this once and for all, to be continued. Ooh, that was good. That was like I, said, good. I told Nikki earlier, I'm like, 50% of this was me, 50% was the AI. Like, I would hit generate multiple times and then delete it. Like, it kept wanting to make sympathy more and more evil. I don't know what it is yeah. with AI hating on sympathy, but they it kept wanting to, like, even though I would kept writing it as if sympathy was no longer ensorcelled, was no longer under a spell. She, they kept wanting to act like she was. I'm like, stop! She, she's not under a spell Lord. anymore. So I, I wrote like, probably like probably um, it's probably fifty percent was me. I, I wrote like whole paragraphs just to get it to stop fucking around before it yeah. found out. You know? Okay. Fucking her. We're gonna have another husband interruption. My child needs pants. Okay. And apparently there are there are are none in his room, so. <laughs> Come on, you can come in. It's fine. Get the child the pants. Cannot be pantsless. I think the orange ones are his. Right on top there. What shirt is he wearing? Oh, no. We can change that tomorrow. It's fine. Just give him the pants. He can't look like nobody loves him. He's got to go to school looking half-ass matched. Okay? Okay, love you. Bye. <laughs> Poor kid. But anyway... No. That was good. I'm I'm loving it. Um, I think I am going to not use AI for the next couple episodes and just see what I can come up with on my own. Um, if you want to continue to prompt yourself with AI, that is totally fine. I have no discrimination whatsoever. But I'm feeling inspired, so I think I'm gonna write, uh, write my versions of this and sort of piggyback off what you get and just go from there. But we will continue. I know there's like such, we need to probably just think about it and do an episode on it. But there is a big, huge kerfuffle in the world um, of artistry and creatives about AI, which fully understandable, fully understandable. Um, but I feel it's like. It's also like we're not, like you said earlier, we're not presenting this as our own work. Like we're, we're telling right. you that we, like I said, 50% of it was AI. I'm not selling the work. I'm not. Right. If I was publishing a book with stuff I made from an AI, yes, that would be wrong. But right. like I said, I'm fully admitting, I told Nikki in a message earlier, I said, well, I'll probably still use it because I need a base. Like, it's hard for me to start from scratch. Like, I know we, we have like for sure. 43 episodes of AI to go off of, but um, uh, like 43 episodes of story, but it's like, it's hard for me to just start from scratch. Like, I, it's like, I want it to give me some sort of guidance so that way I can just right. delete it as I, as I see fit. But yep. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, we will always be honest about what's ours and what's AI. So that's at least our promise there is we will always tell you if it's not ours. So there's that. Um, anyway, I have, a, I have a puppy. You want to see the puppy? Give me, baby. Yeah. Come on, puppers interruption. We always love the puppy interruption. Hi, Ellie. 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 Oh, I love her. I love her so much. You want my chimpkin, huh? You just wanted my chimpkin. You can't have my chimpkin. You're allergic to that. Go on. She's allergic to Mommy's chicken. That's, that's terrible. Yes, she is. She's very allergic to chicken. Huh. Damn, that's very my allergic. dog's favorite meat. I know. Poor baby. Huh? She can't have no chimpkin. You're not nice. I know. They peed you off, huh? I bought her her favorite bones today. We've been out forever and it just like ADHD left my brain. Um, 
to keep to so repurchase them. Target. Yeah, I got yeah, I got two bags of those at Target. Those they're fucking expensive. Jesus Christ! But she only eats one a day, so it's not a big deal. I wish they made them. She likes the blueberry ones. They're the dental, the dental bones. But because she's a large dog, we have to buy the large ones, right? And they're the most expensive, and you get the least amount in that bag. So, okay, bye, Ellie. She just let herself out. But <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's all we got today. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. it. we're done. That's it. Oh, that's all, back. folks. Oh. That's all, folks. Um, no singing today, but I do have to pee, so probably just gonna be an abrupt ending. <laughs> okay, because I have to pee. <laughs> um, we love you. We will see you next week with more Jeremy. Um, do stick around. Go check out the Facebook page, maybe the Discord if you want to see our facelift things first. Because I feel like if you want to know what things are going to look like around here going forward, you should probably be on our Discord because our Discord people get the earliest access to everything. Mm-hmm. So go do that. Okay. We love you. Okay. And we'll see bye. you next week. Go get bye. Come on, mouse. Wake up. Got to do the outro now. Here we go. Oh.